Welcome to the Bob and Cancer Show. Hi, I'm Bob Kavoyan. Well, here we are on our, what I think, is our last episode. We keep saying that. Well, this is, this is. Uh, we're going to wrap up everything we did to kill my partner. Uh, he's dead. He I'm is happy gone. happy to announce that. And uh, my co-conspirators here in, in, in murder hmm. are my lovely wife, Becky. Hello. And my best buddy, Whit. Howdy, Bob. And uh, we are here to uh, let you know, one, I'm cancer-free. Oh, man. It's amazing. And we're going to, I guess, run you through a journey from June, um, I'm taking it back, from July 14th, yep. 2023, until today. Which is? Which is the uh, a couple February, days. February. 13th, almost days Valentine's after, Day. Oh, wow. I know. A couple <laughs> days after the Super Bowl. Yep. Which... Uh, we enjoyed the Super Bowl very much. Yes, big fun. Uh, the party I, was amazing. Uh, we had a great party. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Whit, I'm sorry you couldn't make it. I uh, didn't get a call, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> no. Uh, actually, uh, what happened? Did something happen? Yeah, something happened. Oh, okay. I, I got ill. And when you, uh, when you get sick, your name falls off of party lists. Yes, that's a fact. It's amazing. <laughs> People don't get, call you. People are like, Bob think, has cancer. Because they think you're sick. It used to be uh-huh. people wouldn't call us because Bob's a celebrity and we don't want to bother him. I, now- think, I just think people don't like calling. <laughs> I think so too. So anyhow, on uh, on Super Bowl <laughs> Eve, Saturday night, I, I looked at Becky and said, this is really exciting, hon. We're not going to have anybody bother us while, so we can actually enjoy the commercials. And the game. Uh, and, and the game. Uh, and he, on, on I'm not kidding. He was excited about this. I was very happy. And I'm not going to have any distractions. His wife is a people person. I'm kind she, of a people she, person. She was somewhat upset by that. Oh, I wasn't upset. I was just like, yeah, we don't. There's nothing to look forward to. Susan and Frank weren't coming over. Yale and Carol. This is Nobody, these are my family like, members. No one. You know, they had things there. They have their own Whit lives. We had a party. And we Whit weren't had even a party invited, and we weren't invited. Yeah. Uh-huh. I but, did have a small so, gathering. Yes, we had that. quite a few laughs throughout the day about how, could you keep it down? We were, you know. So we had an imaginary party. We yes. did. It was fun. Oh, my goodness. We had guests galore. They were having the time of their lives. We had so I much I've been food. told Becky to, hey, show them your thanks. <laughs> I, I yeah. did. I flashed the, flashed the group in the wow. party. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, we didn't get much reaction. No, <laughs> no. But it, uh, it was a, 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 fun, a fun day. We did miss seeing our... Our friends on Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, it was weird. But maybe we can change that. Maybe we'll, uh, next someone year. will take pity on us next well, year. Well, if I yes. could reflect. <laughs> yes. I thought about this just not that many years ago. We would have been watching the game in Nassau. Oh, True. Yeah. With yeah, the Bob we, and Tom show. And we a, talked about and that. And 150 of your best friends. Uh huh. You used to enjoy that very Boy, much. Boy, some of the pictures came up, you know, on your memories oh, yeah. this weekend. Yeah. Yep. So so those trips were so much fun. Listeners don't realize, or maybe listeners here don't know, that Bob and Tom used to fly, charter a plane full of winners and some losers. (laughs) (laughs) No, they won a contest, and they got to go to the Bahamas for free. For the weekend of the Super Bowl. It was Every year. Yeah. We chose the Bahamas because it had a casino. Yep. Yep. So you could bet on the game, have some good times. There was no legalized sports gambling in those days no no up no, here i mean no there were no know. fan duels no none of that none of that stuff uh and we would go and have a great uh four-day weekend in yep. the bahamas it was fun it was wonderful i'll, I'll bet you had a blast sunday watching the game i i, I it was different. i enjoyed it very much yeah. sometimes i don't like to be at a party where people are chatting you're trying or to watch when you're the hosting, game you got to keep the food refilled my and, hosting you know. was my daughter and granddaughter and son-in-law and my brother so i oh, really was irritating the i know those yeah. people yeah, see losers <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah right right i have tvs uh, in several yeah. rooms bob so i could yeah. <laughs> you could sneak away <laughs> yeah not, no it was fun it really was and it was just an absolutely fun oh, super bowl what a great game yes yeah, super but that fun. is not why we're here to nope. no it's not we super could go bowl. on and on uh, one of the sad moments that's happened in the last couple of weeks was uh, Toby Keith passed away. Yes. Oh, man. And Toby Keith had stomach cancer, much like I do. Did. Did, I should say. And uh, his, I believe, he, he had symptoms, uh, which led to 
sadly, had uh, taken over his body. Well, that morning when I woke, I always get up before Bob. I don't know why. I'm an easy mark for our dog, so she Mm -hmm. gets me up. And I check the headlines as I'm drinking my coffee, and I saw that news that Toby Keith had passed away, and it broke my heart. And so I waited for Bob to wake up, and when he did, I went in there, and I just said, Honey, I'm so sorry to report that Toby Keith has passed away. Because we knew what he had. He he had had it at the same time as us. That was devastating news. Was his a different stage? I didn't delve His was, I think, may may have been in a different part of his stomach. Mine was at the junction of the esophagus and the top of the stomach. And that's what they removed uh, on the the 14th of July. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they took away from Toby, I have no idea. I don't know if they took all of his stomach. I I do not know. All I know is that the stomach cancer... Uh, took his took his life That's and we um we felt c- compelled at that time uh to do this podcast mm-hmm. partly because we wanted to know as co um journeymen in on this this yeah you know, we saw cancer. an interview with Toby and we were curious if he would share what he had gone through and uh, a lot of people just don't do that yep and, and it uh, really... we missed uh, we missed out being a uh, fellow uh, cancer people. Well, he, yeah. he, I, I was wanted unaware, to know. Yeah. Uh, to the degree similar, Jimmy Buffett. Yes. Yeah. Where yeah. you it's may have private. heard a slight little thing yeah. and then boom. Right. Private. Yep. Very private. But you know what? That's another thing that makes me so proud of Bob is that he is sharing this with everybody. So that anybody out there going through this exact same thing or even similar or just any cancer, um, it's helpful to know what to expect and what you've endured. And uh, so we just felt compelled after we heard about Toby Keith to say, you know what, let's get in there and, and let Bob tell the nitty gritty because this mm-hmm. was not all uh, rainbows and lollipops, no, let me wasn't. tell you. And we found after the 14th of July, we had a lot of stuff we did not expect. And nobody, our fans, fans, our fans, our list, Bob's listeners and fans um, don't realize what we went through now family most most of our family and yeah. closest friends do know but they don't know the extent because i didn't share the some of those details yeah, you don't They're want to share horrible. the details sure they are but on the 14th is when i went in for my surgery and mm-hmm. it started off with the doctor coming out early to call you and let you know oh. everything had yeah. gone swimmingly we we were expecting my sister susan sat with me um that early that morning when we went in and we were expecting to be there seven seven plus hours um this is a big surgery and even our anesthesiologist had said um who i love you'll hear about him later um he had said becky this is a this is a big surgery the the surgeon is telling you five hours i'm telling you it's going to be about seven okay so it was like okay well here we go so susan sat with me frank came and brought us lunch my brother-in-law um and then it wasn't they seven came hours. out at like three and a half or four hours in. Someone came and said, the doctor would like to see you. And I'm like, no, nope, 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 no, no. It's don't. probably not a good sign, right? Too early, that. too early. This could be, this. You know, I think we might have mentioned this, Bob, in our previous mm, podcast. Probably, yeah. That um, he called us in and then he said it went better than expected. It was beautiful surgery. And uh, we were quite relieved. Uh you know, I could breathe then, and then we went to the ICU. Bob was taken to recovery first, and then he went to the ICU, and they told me they would be taking him off of the ventilator that evening. This was probably late afternoon. Right. Susan and Frank went home because it's, you know, Bob did great. I mean, Bob was 100%. How about <laughs> so, that? So then that night, the, truly, the shit hit the fan, and... uh I know we've mentioned some of the you know moments that we had during that time, but we didn't mention that the biggest moment, which well, was Bob. Well, uh, I was just I was wondering uh, why it hadn't come out. He still had that breathing tube; should have been done by now. And I'm up there in the ICU. It's dark outside by now, and I'm just kind of waiting to get some information. Finally, they came in to remove the ventilator. It, that's the term. I don't know exactly the vent, you mm-hmm. know. So they start to take it out, and Bob was unconscious or sleepy, and they told me after that was taken out, he would wake up, mm-hmm. but that he would have 
lots of good medicine and not to worry. So they take out the vent, and immediately Bob just lost his mind and kind of sat up, jerked up in the bed and said, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I need my inhaler, I need my inhaler. I remember none of this. No, he won't, he, he doesn't remember this, thank gosh. Mm-hmm. So um, a bunch of people come running in, and they gave him more Dilaudid or Dilaudin, whatever your pain medicine was. Right. And they gave him too much. I was overserved. He was (laughs) overserved. Yeah, he was overserved. And he went out and went away from me. And then they all were freaking out. And uh, I heard the word Narcan, which we all know the word Narcan now from the news when people overdose on whatever, Whatever. fentanyl, Mm -hmm. heroin, you know. So I heard the word Narcan and I said, okay, I'm going out in the hall. I, I don't want to be in here because I think Bob's died, of course, and so they're going to bring him back, and that's exactly what they did. They brought him back, put him on uh, a little bit after midnight, then they put him back on the ventilator because they could not get his pain managed or any breathing. I couldn't, I couldn't breathe on my own. He couldn't breathe on his own because Bob had these drains in him he had two garden hoses stuck in his side coming out the side yeah <laughs> and anybody who's had like out there in the world <clears throat> if you've had open heart surgery and we've had a few close friends who've had it yeah. and they all have chest tube it's a drain tube that they put in when they've cut you open and you got oozy things in there and those chest tubes come out of your body and they're as big as a garden hose they're gross there's Two of them sticking right out of his side and down across the bed and into a box. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that hurts. They said, imagine sticking that garden hose in your side all the way into your body and up against your lung and then no anesthetic because that's what Bob had at the time of the breathing tube Narcan moment was that's what he was feeling. And he couldn't breathe because as soon as he would expand his lungs, ouch. You know, up against that garden hose. Right. So we became, over the next many months, well acquainted with the garden hose coming out of Bob's body. It stayed yeah, in I had there. one of those. Uh, it kind of looked <laughs> like uh, an astronaut in the 60s. Yes, with the tube. Who used to yeah. carry the Remember suitcase that? Yeah. with the tube that went into his uh, mm-hmm. suit. That's exactly what it did That's look like. That's what I had for six weeks to six to eight weeks. Yeah. Everywhere. He carried I it. I carried it everywhere. <laughs> it, was, it was horrible. It was disgusting. Didn't you have a little cart, though? Didn't you have like a little walker? That well, that's, yeah, we can't get ahead okay, of ourselves. Yeah, we're right. still in the ICU. Okay. Yeah, we're still in the ICU. <laughs> yeah. But I'm back the... on the ventilator now, and I was on the ventilator yeah, for, for another what, days or something. six days. I think I wrote it down here on our for notes. S- but... For six more days, yeah. I was on that ventilator. And during that time, so... Uh, you know, what we had said prior to his surgery is, you know, if you remember, if you listen to this podcast, Bob was awesome. Bob didn't lose his hair. Bob didn't lose his mustache. Bob gained didn't, weight. I didn't and, lose my mind. No. <laughs> until. No. All the karma came back and bit us, man. We got all the stuff after July yeah. 14th. Yeah, and, we did. Uh, he, so Bob's in the ICU. He gets pneumonia. That's bad. I'm, they're telling me, you know, every day they're coming in with something new. That was bad. <laughs> so, it was not and stop. I was trying to sleep there, so I, I did not want to leave Bob. I thought Bob was going to die the second I walked out the door, so I would never, never just wanted to leave him. We did, however, have prime real estate. It was fantastic. Bob's beautiful room in the ICU, high tech, sliding like super multi glass walled doors, looking out onto the nurses' station. You don't remember this, but there was a lanai. Oh. <laughs> Man, wow. if only. Wow, how <laughs> That's nice. That's pretty good. <laughs> and right next to... Look at the ocean. <laughs> right next to our room was the break room where there was coffee and treats and mm-hmm. pop and stuff. So I had literally prime real estate, and I got to know the place. I mean, I was there for two, two over two weeks. A little over two weeks. We were in this ICU uh, floor with all the great care. Well, so Bob gets pneumonia. Bob has the drain tubes. Um. At one point, our doctor came in, and I'm, I'm, I've written it down, trying to remember which day it was when they determined... Um, determined what? That he had a leak in his esophagus. Oh, yeah. That was the biggest news, the worst news. So the drain tube was supposed to be gone by the time I left the ICU. Right. Well, they found that there was a pinhole 
in my esophagus, drip, and it had to drip, uh, drip, and it was dripping out and Jeez. filling this box <laughs> that, that so I'm carrying disgusting. around. <laughs> it turns out that I had to, uh, I had to wait another six weeks. I think for it was that, six weeks for that to heal. And that was because where they reattach things, it didn't close all the way. Is oh that- yeah, I'm looking on my notes, Bob. You had that cumbersome drain box until September 18th. So from it was July, put in in July 14th. July 14th until the 18th of Good September. Lord. Yeah. 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 It was bad. It was horrible. So the breathing tube, um, this entire time he's intubated, which means he's asleep, which means um, he's dr- drugged. You cannot be awake and have that tube down your throat. You know, it's just, right. that's just the way it, it works. You're, you're intubated. Um, he also, uh, let's see, during that time, Oh, yeah. Okay. Breathing tube came out on day six. Right. Okay. And Bob's first words, because he was, then they woke him up. I mean, your breathing tube comes right. out, and they, they sort of slowly removed him from his sedation, and then he opened his eyes, and it was a miracle. I don't remember any of this. I it don't was remember, like a movie. I don't remember what I said. I, I do. What I said? So... <laughs> But when we were making these notes, Bob said, now, did you write down my first words? And I'm like, yeah, but I don't really need the paper. But he said, you remember him. of course, I'll always remember right. him forever and ever and ever. Well, what did I say? But he, he looked at me and he whispered, which is unusual for Bob. And he said, where are we? Yeah. Because he had no idea. Had no idea. No. And I told him, and then he said, how long have I been here? Mm-hmm. And of course, he's whispering because he had a tube down his throat for sure. two weeks. And then he said... And when can we go home? Yeah. Because we were told we were going to go home in seven to ten days. I remember that. Well, the tube didn't even come out till day eight, or no, day six. Yeah. So day six. So he's thinking, oh, okay, all right, here I am. So we had all kinds of new things happen. Let's go home. But well, we were not going to be out of there within 10 no. to 14 well, days. Well, because of the pneumonia and then because of the little leak in his poor little esophagus, which is only about, what, eight inches long or something down uh, his well, throat? Uh, it's like uh, I so, honestly uh, don't know. Can I say something? Sure. I, I, oh, please, I ask questions. I think it's important to let listeners know that none of this had anything to do with cancer recurring. No, no. This was no, all no. post-operative this surgical. This all happened from the moment we went in to have the uh, cancer removed. Right. And all this took place. And then things that you don't expect are things that the surgeons no. don't expect. You know how you read about people who had uh Oh, so and so passed away. Complications from surgery. Yes. Complications from da 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 da. They had heart surgery and they had complications. Well, we didn't know what those complications were, but we ended up having all of them. We had complications. <laughs> all of them. But we got through them. You yes, did. we did. And here we're home. Let's remind our listeners we are home right now. Yeah. Bob is well. I'm very well. You're, we're just giving you the the dirt. This is the stuff that happened that, uh, to let you know that it is. It's a little more difficult than you've been than through. You it. really think? Yeah, he has been through it. He has been, and I I want his friends, fans, listeners to 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 know what he experienced to therefore appreciate even more where he is now, healthy and home, because he had to fight every single day since July fourteenth. Yep, every single day, and here he is. Right, but yeah. after that uh, uh, removal. Apparently, I, I wasn't a. He went crazy. A very good patient. He was terrible. Apparently, I went nuts. <laughs> he I, had I, what's called, and you had you had been in. Yes, I came to see him, and it was. But it was after that. By the okay. way, when you came by, I was faking. I was sleeping. Well, you don't remember <laughs> this. I didn't want to talk to you to, to lighten the mood. I reminded you, you owed me fifty two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to twenty? <laughs> yeah, what happened to twenty bucks? Used to be you owe me twenty bucks, uh-huh. right? So Bob <clears throat> got what's called. I see you delirium. And I didn't know what it was until someone told me when I was losing my own shit. Like, what is wrong with Bob? What, he's crazy. He he was like a conspiracy theorist. He was like, you were. <laughs> you were like way. one of those tinfoil hat people. Who are those people standing in the corner? Why are they looking at me? Like, he was really? totally... I was seeing stuff hallucinating. Hallucinating. Wow. Okay. And then not just that. Everything they did when they came to treat him was a conspiracy don't let them touch me i don't know what they why are they doing this and i'm like wow okay well this is bob now i mean that's how i 
I actually This is thought. Bob now. This is how he's going to be when we take him home. <laughs> okay. I didn't know. What are these people doing at our house? <laughs> See, you think that's funny. That's exactly what I heard you. That's exactly so the thing. thing. And they said, so I'm like, what is wrong with him? And they said, Bob, is, it's not uncommon. It's, not everyone gets this, but it's not uncommon to have ICU delirium because he was sedated for six, eight days, whatever it was. He was asleep. Then he wakes up, and there's no way to tell day from night. He has been unconscious the whole time. So you don't know day from night. And, you know, anybody who um, is like an over-the-road trucker or, or someone who's um, awake for long periods of time, it's easy to get super exhausted to where your mind isn't even mm-hmm. working right. Got to the point where I apparently was pulling... Stuff. Oh, he pulled tubes out of pulling oh, tubes gosh, out that I wasn't supposed to be. It was funny. It was, it was bad. horrible. It was so and he had even, a. Oh yeah, they had to end up um, tying Bob. Tie, no, they tied tie his hands, hands down. down, like in the fo- not because over of the, the tubes, cuckoo's because nest. of the constant masturbation. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Well, I'm, oh, ki- I'm kidding. Uh, it's, it's because oh. your health plan did not cover that, Bob. Right. Yeah. It was a complaint from housekeeping. You know, they, they clean up a lot of stuff there. Oh, okay. right. right. But all apparently, right. this was... No, no, I'm I kidding. I, they did so have to tie my hands they down. They tied his hands down, which was very upsetting for me. And remember, all this time, I'm trying to sleep in the hospital. He had a little couch off to the side. And uh, eventually, I was no good to Bob and no good to myself because I had to sleep. You're wearing yourself out. So let me say to all the... People going into cancer treatment or surgery or whatever, take care of yourself. I was, I sort of made fun of that line for quite some time during cancer treatment. Mm-hmm. People said, now you remember to take care of yourself. I'm like, I, what do I have to do? I got it easy. Bob's the one who has to work hard. Well, I had to be reminded to eat and sleep. Mm-hmm. I had to eat and I had to sleep. So my family took care of me, fed me, um, and then I started going home to sleep for a few hours every night because there's nothing you can do no, nothing i could really do is. well i, I mean, wanted to be there because no, i i, I know, know but i'm just saying at some point yeah i mean uh, if you'll you're find a, out there were things i could do though i could talk back to big brother oh yeah, they, they ended actually, up they put cameras in they put a big brother camera for right what, in his room for what reason on a pole apparently because uh, he pulled a tube because i was uh pulling tubes he was unruly he was ungovernable then i got to the point where anything i did uh if i like if I was warm, I'd put my foot out of my sheets. He was trying. He was agitated. So for four days, Bob, he gets the tube taken out, and for four days he did not sleep. This is after he's awake. So now he's awake. He's got just oxygen, not a breathing tube, and he couldn't sleep for four days and four nights. So he's agitated. Yeah, I agree. You know how you are. Yeah, oh yeah. You're, you're just you lose your yeah, mind. Right. So he's he's lost his mind. He can't sleep. And he, and the first thing he did was he kept monkeying around with his uh, oxygen. Oxygen, you know those little things that go in your nose. <laughs> yes, yes. And they're I, very. Uncomfortable. They told me they were going to put a, because there was one nurse who scolded me, like Ooh. it was my fault. Let me tell you, she, she said, it's all your fault that he that he pulled that tube out. Don't you ever leave his room without telling a nurse. And what? I'm like. Excuse me. Uh, let me object. Uh, I have prime real estate. I went right next door to get a cup of coffee and came right back in. I bet I was gone for a minute. Right. And during that time, unrelated to me leaving the room because he's unaware, he pulled a tube out of his nose. And the big the the, the nurse she was a b i t c h, <laughs> and she got you know on I, me I, and I, I, did, I I didn't do very well in spelling. No. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. I raised a ruckus. Because I said, listen, Come on. I can only be here when I, I can only be here so much. I have to go home and sleep. I have to leave the room to use the bathroom or go get something to eat or whatever. I am not in charge. Of, you guys are in charge right. of making sure my husband is well cared for. So a supervisor came. We had a nice chat. She was beautiful about it. And she said, I'll let you know. This is a teaching moment for that nurse. Good. And I'll also let you know, she's not one of my nurses. She's what's called a, like a relief nurse or something. She came from somewhere else. When they're busy, ah. they staff the floor with other nurses. So thank goodness it wasn't one of their nurses because okay. I had nothing but 100% beautiful caregivers there. Unbelievably great people, except one. So and she wasn't. She wasn't. Really. But that's when they decided <clears throat> they would put the Big Brother camera in that I'd never heard of. Have you heard of that? No. 
Well, well, they can monitor you instead of having a nurse in the room with you. Now which they I can guess just, it makes sense. They can just watch you. Eh, yeah, but well, they can watch whoever's in the room. They're watching me, too. They're so watch- now, oh. let's see, I pick my nose or scratch my head or lift my bra and readjust or there's someone watching. So there's someone watching. I objected, but I said, okay, I'll give it a, I'll give it a try. We'll see how this goes. Mm-hmm. So we're sitting quietly. I'm reading. Bob is trying to doze. He's just relaxing. And he pulled on his oxygen tube. And I hear this voice go. <laughs> this is no exaggeration. Right. Okay. Don't touch your oxygen. Jeez. Don't touch your oxygen. And I jumped up. I'm like, what? And I stood up and flipped her off with both hands, looked at the camera, flipped her off. And I said, the double is this bird. a... I didn't know it was a real person. I thought it was well, going to be, be. No, I thought it was going like to be a, some kind of a like, button, a, oh. like an alert, and bring a nurse in. Oh, I see. I thought it was going to be a motion sensor. So you're double burdened the. Uh, I double burdened her oh so many times because it's a real person and she's spying on you. Another day goes by and I'm not happy about this unit. Another day goes by and you're trying to get comfortable, Bob. You can't sleep. He, keep in mind this poor guy hasn't slept. He's agitated. He's got his arms tied to the bed and it's terrible and he's he tried to get comfortable i have pictures of his hilarious ways he laid out in the bed but he put his knees over the side of the bed and she said please put your legs back in the bed (laughs) please put your legs back in the bed and she yells and it was so disturbing and i did not like it flipped her off again Talked to the nurses, said this is inappropriate. This is just giving me the creeps having a, well, yeah, first of all, be, the observation while I'm in there reading a book or try, you know, talking to There's got to be a viral video of you flipping off a camera somewhere that <laughs> oh, I, man, I, only I would wish. love to have. I would love to have it oh, so yeah. bad. At one point, this was toward the end of our stay, they took the camera out. Mm-hmm. And then they sent in a human. And they put a human in there. They put with a us? human to sit in the corner. I forgot about that. It till was right a now. Uh, sketch artist, like <laughs> a <laughs> trial. She sat there, didn't do a thing What's except literally sit in a corner. I don't know what. what and I was in there. I, That's it was, odd. I didn't like one thing about it. So, and this hospital, whoever. I don't remember uh, this lady at listeners all. Listeners know which hospital we were in. I'm not going to say it now. Right. But boy, I didn't like it. But I liked everything else about that place. And well, they uh, they did. Did me all right. I'm, oh, in, I'm me, in good shape. I want to yep. say the part. I'm, there's two things I want to say about the ICU. One is my people who took care of Bob. And I know some of them are listening. They know who they are, and I don't want to say their names, but they know who they are. I see you. I, I, I know you, and I thank you. And the respiratory therapists kept Bob alive. Mm-hmm. They brought in these amazing machines and tools to shake his lungs. Have you seen this? Never they even heard of that. They wrapped his body to get all that to the out of the lungs. Yep. <gasps> they put these yep. like vests on him and it, it would be like da, 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 like someone pounding your back, but a full body pounding up Never your body. And they did these breathing machines. They did all kinds of things. They were in 24 hours a day. They would come in at certain intervals. And I know who they are. I know every single one of their names and faces. And I will never forget you. Just so you know. You know who you are, and I know who you are. Our anesthesiologist, who was a bright ray of sunshine, um, I wish I could say his name because I loved nope, him, but can't I can't. His name. But nope. he, whenever he came in, and the doctors did rounds every single day. I saw them all. They were wonderful. But when he came in, he lit up the room with hope. I don't know how to describe it, but it was in his eyes and in his smile. Because I thought multiple times during this time when Bob got, you know, pneumonia, that Bob was going to die because people die of pneumonia all the flipping time. Not uncommon. He was just a ray of hope. Uh, one of our physician assistants from the surgeon, she knows who she is. I know who you are. I will never forget you. You kept me in the palm of your hands with her eyes. When the doctors would come in um, and deliver some devastating update, and I'd be standing there alone because the family's not going to be there at nope. 6 in the morning and be there. It's impossible. And she looked at me with the most intense gaze 
and and kind of would do these gestures like it's okay reassurance i got you we got you and she held me during that time and you know who you are and i know who you are and i thank you in case she's listening, you know, Very just nice. these people were incredible. Incredible. And we worked with these people a lot for the next, you know, uh, two months. Yeah. And uh, we're still working with them. Yeah, we're still working with them. They're great folks. Um, they made him cancer free. Yes, they did. Yeah. So, what's the first thing you remember that you can recall? Uh, once we got out of the ICU, I was moved into a new level, and it was Becky. Uh, we had a TV in there. Okay. And I was still kind of delirious, and we were watching these uh, shows Hilarious. with uh, like Columbo, The Rifleman. Oh yeah, uh, all these old shows from way back Classic. when. And I, uh, what I remember, I th- could have swore I saw Lucas McCain, The Rifleman, shoot Perry Mason. <laughs> 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 That's the kind of well, uh, how disjointed. Yeah. How. Your brain is just so not together, and I'm watching these shows, and they don't make sense, and I'm mixing shows together, and no. it was very odd. Well, that answers yeah. a question But that for is me. one of the first things I remember. I never knew how Perry Mason became Ironside. Yes. Now oh, I know. Now I know. He's the paralyzed oh, by the way. That right. SOB stepped in Lucas McCain's way. <laughs> just Paul, off. Paul, don't shoot him. So at yeah. what point did he get pneumonia? Like how, uh, how he was early maybe, in those? Uh, that was pretty quick. Three in. or four days yeah. in. Yeah, I remember hearing uh, because that. Because when you're laying flat, um, that's when people get pneumonia. Mm-hmm. So Bob had a special, like, and I'm sure there's people out there who have gone through this kind of thing, but a special mattress that moved. It was like waves. Um, it was like an electric waterbed, okay. if you can imagine. It was like it made mm-hmm. waves. He had to wear special dealy bobbers on his feet and his calves to keep him from getting clots because he couldn't, well, couldn't that, even couldn't be moved. Move. I think that's interesting because when word got out that Bob had pneumonia amongst mm-hmm. close friends, the question would be how. Yeah. I yeah. think people think you just yeah. like, had a window open or something. They got, <laughs> no, yeah, I'm serious. It's because people, you're laying flat yep. and the, you can't cough. Yep. So you, so with, no, we cough. You and I, we all cough. I can clear your lungs out. He I couldn't do lungs. that. He couldn't do it. So they would bring in uh, machines to do it for him. And then there was, after he kind of moved up to the rehabby more areas and stuff, it was his full-time job was coughing, basically. Clearing out the lungs. You've got to cough. Yes. You've just got to cough. I had no problem with that. Okay. No, and well, you did actually. You, you know, early on, you didn't well, want it was, to. It was, it was hard. It hurt. Well, it also hurt. Yeah, it hurt. It, did. it hurt. So, and I think we've talked about that. That Bob escaped the severe pain by being intubated for all that time and on super drugs. Yep. That um, I was he, fortunate. He didn't feel the horrible stitches and wounds mm. and stuff. You know that were on there. I do want to mention too before we move on from the from the. Uh, I see you. Mm-hmm. Is that I'm a, an outgoing person, just in general. I can walk into a room and you know meet people. Well, in this setting, you're in when you're a caregiver or the family member that's present when someone's suffering like Bob was, and he was there a long time. I actually ended up having seniority <laughs> because we were there for two weeks, and most people have either moved on to a better floor or they've passed away. And so I had seniority, and I knew almost everyone. It's a big floor, and I knew almost everyone. And I would go into my little, like I said, I had prime real estate, and I'd go into our little break room, and I'd have my hanky at all times. And I passed out hankies to people. I took hankies Mm -hmm. because everybody had tears and worries. But not everybody has the ability to open a conversation. And I found a way to do that um, with these fellow travelers, mm-hmm. fellow suffering, loved. You know, uh, we weren't really caregivers at this point. We're just worriers. No. We're just family members who are hovering at our bedside of our loved one. And so I would walk up, get my little coffee, and kind of stand. And I there was maybe a woman sitting alone crying. And, and I would just say, Boy, it's really hard, isn't it? This is really hard. And then every time they would look at me in the eyes and go, 
yes, this is, this is so terrible, crying. And I might say, well, my husband is right next door, and I feel very blessed that I get to be here with him every minute. And then they would open up and say, well, my daughter, my husband, my... I met one woman who had been married for 63 years wow. to her husband, and they had never spent one night apart. And she was with him in the hospital, mm-hmm. and he ultimately passed away. But um, I got to sing with her. I gave her hankies. I brought her treats, you know, because I had nothing to do except sit with Bob. There's a lot more to it than just watch again well, and, and after your, your loved one. One thing you did, um, obviously we can't be there. Right. Family and friends could not be there. Intermittently we got to visit. Yeah. Stick your head in. Stick your head you in. Know. That was it. But... Um, you, Becky, would do a nice text chain Yeah. every day, every two days. Every day, I think I did. I think that's that important. That helped a lot. Because people can't call. No. They don't want right. to bother you. But, right. But proactively letting us know how he was doing. Everybody was good, worried. Good, bad, and indifferent. And when you're, uh, you know, when you're all loaded up with painkillers, and you don't know how to act with visitors. No, you, know? you, you, you had like, no responsibility except getting better. Yeah, it's like Not you know, one someone thing. was in the room was like, Okay, well, I'm going to sleep. One thing uh, they, that I did learn, and that this is just common sense, and I hope other people would take this away with them from listening, is when you do come to visit, make it short, make it sweet, yep. and hit, yep. just go. Come in. Leave a fiver. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but seriously, nobody wants a hangers-on because all we're doing is worrying about whether he's going to vomit or he's going to, you know, you don't want to have a problem when you've got a guest in the no. hospital room. So come in, say hi, smile, and then leave. Yeah, we were there mainly just to agree. say hi to you. Yeah, say yeah. hi. To and just because to, you were out I was of out. Just to be present. I remember you know? a few people stopping by, mm-hmm. but, you know, it, uh, I uh, obviously remembered more and more as we moved on, moved into uh, uh, physical therapy and occupational yep. therapy. We did. We to moved re- to another move, floor. Uh, floors. And that I got great. to move around more. Um, and I got to know some of the people myself. But I was, uh, um, I was no longer confined to the bed. I had to he learn how taking to... taking steps. I had to learn how to swallow again. Yeah. Which is, I which can't is even imagine. Very difficult. It's because that tube was down his throat yep. for so long. It just damaged Ir- his voice. You can hear yeah. that his voice is different. It's still, it's still different. Uh, but, I, you know, I was on a feeding tube for, a tube for uh, eight weeks plus. <laughs> Way just, plus. Uh, yeah. It was nonstop. <laughs> but I, I, I had to learn how to swallow. That's why I had to be fed through this feeding tube. And let's not forget, so he had this drain tube, chest tube, and he could not have... Anything, including Solids. ice. He couldn't. You couldn't have ice, because everything he would swallow was coming out that little leak, that, that little, little drip. hole in the esophagus. So they did a Good swallow water. test, yep. where he has to swallow some yucky green stuff, <laughs> and then they do ultrasound or some kind of X-rays or something to see how it goes, and he failed because the drip, the green stuff, just started showing up in his. The dye started showing up in his drain box immediately in my oh, astronaut Lord. box yep. it was the proof that he did have a leak bummer so that we had big back and forth are we gonna go in and surgically fix this that, or what yeah. and boy we so didn't. in order to have it repair itself i had to go without food solid food and for two months for uh six weeks that's crazy uh so i couldn't have any i couldn't so have anything when you had the feeding tube were yep. you and they were you hungry? That's a good question. No. Because I never, I never, never asked was you that. I, it was called a J-tube. There's two kinds. A G-tube goes in your stomach, and a J-tube goes in your intestine. His went into his intestine. Okay. Just FYI for people out there. But when you couldn't eat because they were feeding you, you were... But I was, was always... not hungry. I was always full, so there was never... But okay. he was thirsty. Yes. Oh. oh, so thirsty. But I couldn't have water. Couldn't even so have how'd you ice. do that? Uh, well, that was all part of the feeding tube. So... Wow, I could I've, give him these little sponges on a stick. They look like a giant, uh, t- like a Q-tip. I could dip it in the water, shake it off, and then just dab his lips. Yeah, I didn't know that. That oh, was for sucked. the first That's few awful. weeks. Yeah, it was terrible. It was horrible. So and I uh, then eventually some ice. Yes, no, got he couldn't ice. swallow oh. it. He had a I remember tiniest the, little chip. I do remember the first time <laughs> a nurse gave me ice. It was the most oh, glorious thing I'd ever well, tasted. He was so thirsty. And in my 
uh, my delirium. I had concocted this plan <laughs> so for the uh, to trick the nurse into giving me another ice because I was only allowed this one. Like one little crunch of ice. Do you remember what the plan was? I don't, but okay. I remember it almost hitting my lips and then it being snatched away. Oh. So it had almost worked. It almost worked. You almost <laughs> had it. So you but, know, in his mind, he yep. was plotting. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm a survivor. I want some food. Yep. I'll hunt for it. Yep. There it is. There's ice right there. Yep. I'll figure out a way to get it. Yep. Oh, man. And I, I uh, wanted so bad to give him ice. I didn't remember that you couldn't drink. Oh, I couldn't eat or drink. It was. Nothing. It makes sense. It was but tough. I, yeah. Okay. You know, because all this stuff that had been worked on had to heal. Had that leak not appeared. We would have been out of there a lot. Oh, would. We would have been home. He would yeah. have been eating. But okay. that leak set us back by a couple of months. Yeah. Um, which was a big bummer, and uh, it just th- Bob had thought he was going to golf. I when I asked the doctor, he said, uh, "This is you should be yeah, you should be back on the golf course in September." Hmm. He and hasn't I, been on the golf by course. September. I was uh, still Hooked working up, off a of feeding tube. Puttering too. around, yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So was, he was uh, pretty pretty disappointed with the setbacks. However, he did the work. He did what had to be done. He really did. And uh, I think I'd like to say something. The, the thing being an outsider yep. but once he was home i could come right every week and we'd sit on the screen and porch you still were hooked up carrying his box around stuff. But, i had to bring but, my box out but we could sit and visit but it's amazing to me that i never saw you get despondent no but uh, there are definitely up uh, days and down days i think it's important yeah. that your attitude carries attitude you is through. everything oh, it with it does no, make serious. Serious. it's difference. literally everything because i would drive home thinking Man, I don't know if I could do this. Well, I, I thought felt the same way whenever I had to go into physical therapy. Man, I yep. I don't know if I can make it. Mm-hmm. Well, and one of the things a- during the um, ICU time when I was um, basically wandering the halls, if they would, it was time to give Bob a bath. You know, they they'd come in and it took a long time to get him naked and everything. And I would leave the room and go wander the halls and talk to people. Because those people were lonesome and needed somebody right. to talk to, and I could do that. It That's a thing you to I can do. Have a little bit of human contact. Yes, and I'm a good listener, yep. and I could make them laugh. Mm-hmm. We would find things that were funny Giggle. in this in this place. That's terrible. And so we would laugh almost inappropriately, whistling through the graveyard kind yep. of laughter. But. Um, that's what people needed when it helped up their attitude. It helped up my attitude because attitude was what Bob needed. He needed me to be present and positive because he was the one fighting. I wasn't oh, yeah. fighting. I didn't want to do anything. I mean, I was just exhausted. Yeah. Every, uh, all the time. When he finally got to stand up, this is before he even got to take any steps. Mm-hmm. They did what was the physical therapist came in and did a sway test. Have you heard of this? I stood up. I think and I stood I up swayed. and held onto a oh. back of a chair. And I go back. He, his arms were, his hands were holding onto a chair, and I was in front of him. So imagine I'm Bob, you're me, and in between us is a chair, and he's holding on. And they said, "You can't walk yet, but you're gonna, you're gonna stand here." They helped him stand up, and then hold onto the chair and sway from one foot to the other. Oh. And then so they, wanted they you said, to sway. "Becky, wanted me to move. Yeah. Hold out your hands." And I held out my hands, and they said, "Bob, grab Becky's hands." Now sway together. And then Bob was looking in my eyes. Oh, wow. And he was kind of dancing. And then he looked at the nurses and he goes, that's how I make my moves. That is yeah. hilarious. Oh, it was the sweetest that's thing. That's hilarious. Well, oh. I didn't know. I, you know I it was the most romantic thing in my whole life. There's this hot lady in front of me and I figured I better take my... Because he was still cuckoo. Yeah. And then he just went, <laughs> that's how I make my moves. That's how I... You know that little... Hey, yeah, well, I've yeah, seen yeah. you dance, and you are not lying. <laughs> no, no. It was so and, uh, That's exactly sweet. how I dance. I sway. <laughs> but then I thought to myself, I have my husband back. He's funny. There he is. Yep, yep. He's being sweet. He's being funny. And then slowly but surely, step by step, he started taking a few steps and walking around the nurses' station, yeah, I could get to the flirting end. with the pretty girls. Oh, I could yeah. get to the, uh, end, uh, to the door. Of my room and then back, and I was totally exhausted. Exhausted. That's about 10 feet. The last yeah. time, time I came before you moved to the other floor, he wasn't in, there was no one in the room. I thought, uh oh. I know. It's, it's, I know. Yep. But you were out <laughs> making your tour. 
You were out doing your walk. Yeah, I was out he walking. did his yeah. walk. So we actually was... got to go outside a couple times, and that helped Bob immensely. Oh, yeah. He got shaved. That helped him. He did not like that I beer. was uh, 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 under. I mean, I was, for the most part, two weeks plus. Of beard. I had no idea. No shaving. And he's Armenian, remind you. Man, I tell you, I had a beard I've never had. Well, uh, so long and so thick. Your and wife, itchy. Your wife sent me to CVS to get a mustache comb, which I didn't even know was a I thing. I forgot about this. And, and I thought this was like a joke. I thought, no. I'm going to go in, and I'm oh. on candid camera. Yeah. This little girl <laughs> had no idea what it was. And it's you a, don't have a mustache. No. And so I went, she goes, well, it would be back with beard stuff. And yep. there it was, mustache comb. <laughs> I forgot about they this. Have, what? Yeah. Yeah. Because Bob had a, a, not just the little cannula uh, oxygen, but he had like a whole thing, oxygen thing. And it was making his mustache gross, like stuck with, yeah. with breathing, yuckness. And we took that, I took that comb and brushed out the yuckiness and it made him feel so much better and yep. looking like a normal guy never heard of it yeah, yeah well I, you know you have to have a mustache to be part of the club and, and when he got shaved like, it know all the really, accessories <laughs> it really did make you feel better yeah you know? well shaving yeah yeah just that clean feel, yeah it changed yeah. my life yeah and uh that's uh, we got to uh the rehab facility and we spent a couple of weeks there and it was a very slow <clears throat> Slow process, but we we got through it. I got healthier every day. That's where I uh, I had decorated his room with a bunch of photos. Yeah, photographs. Everywhere. I got those stick on photos you can oh, yeah, get printed yeah. at Walgreens, and they don't Kinda hurt like the those wall. Fat head things. They were like fat heads, <laughs> but they were our our family, oh, us, that's cool. the grandkids, the siblings, the whole yeah. shooting match. Because I wanted that room to be cheerful, cheerful, but I wanted him to be thinking of home, going home. So he would get discouraged on a day. He well, would they not, said I couldn't go home. Yeah, we couldn't go home, and he would be bummed out. I yep. mean, it's a natural thing. You're, you've already now been a month away from home. Oh, it has to be and, frustrating. Uh, he's got tubes, feeding tubes and chest tubes still, and he's got to go to all his Everywhere therapy. I go, every time I had to do physical therapy, I had to carry that stupid That's box That's awful. Bob. I can't yeah. even imagine. Oh, <laughs> it was, like, it was horrible. ridiculous. And so I had a saying that I said almost every day, and it was, you got to be here anyway. You might as well be awesome. And so... Well, I already know I'm awesome, so I didn't really... I don't know if it helped, but it helped me. <laughs> right. I mean, and I'd come home, and, and they wouldn't let me sleep overnight there, so I had to leave at 8 o'clock. And I couldn't get in until 8 o'clock the next morning. So I would just think to myself, well, I got to be there anyway. I might as well be awesome. Like, and I meant home. I got to be home. Right. I might as well be awesome. I didn't want to be here. I wanted to be with Bob, mm -hmm. cheering him on and right. walking with him and stuff. But some days he didn't like it, but he did it anyhow. See, that's what I was trying to say. I mean, you could have given up. You could have oh, had sure. Easily. People do. Yes, you could have had a horrible attitude. And easily. I know it's hard. I'm not saying that you either choose A or B. I'm sure it's hard. Well, it's not, uh, the difficult part is that uh, you do become exhausted quickly. I, can, I can't imagine. And uh, you can only go so much each day. <clears throat> and you get to that point and you are uh, you're just well, and you're then, done. Tell about the nurses who, who were fans, the troubles we had. I had a couple of uh, nurses. This who, is not good. Who were... Uh, uh, knew Listeners, who I was, yeah. fans of the program, and they became nervous around me. And when they they were a little too obvious as to Shaky what they were hands. trying to do, Shaky and they hands. were afraid they were going to do this or that, and that, and one guy shot the the feeding tube. Uh, <laughs> he blew his load. Blew the blew the blew the valve on it. Wow! And, and I had a, everywhere. I had uh, food everywhere. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, and one just, time, the just nurse, horrible. They're, they're just nervous, and so they just forget to turn a valve or forget to do this or that. And Bob was out with physical therapy, golfing. I don't know if you remember this. You were, they had a little putting green. They had a putting green out He oh. was so excited to be putting. And just it's not really even putting, just but Holding trying. onto a walker <laughs> with one hand and a putter with another. So it was and then the, I looked it was down. The senior tour. Yeah, it was. And his feeding tube was dripping no, down no, his no, leg no. all over his shoes. No. And I was so pissed. Oh. Like, really? Is this Forgot the... to close it. So this is the this is a backup. Yeah. It's coming from the intestines. That's yeah. not good. It's not no. good. It was so infuriating. Just that a they, someone couple would... of weird things, you know, happen. But... but you know what? That And his toilet didn't work. 
Well, the toilet was, uh, it worked. It worked. <laughs> the only problem is it shot water from the little handle. It would shoot water straight up. It's one of those industrial toilets that you see at uh, the, a stadium. It has the big handle you push down. It was so and bad. Next, as soon as you push that down, the stream of water shot to Not the just ceiling. Not a stream, like a whole I mean, gusher. Like it, a, straight to the ceiling. That's everybody's like faithful. worst so, yeah. nightmare at an airport. Oh, yeah. Exactly. But it's like not the contents of what's in the uh, It was just water. The bowl. But still. It's just the water. But you're going, I don't wow, know. I, here's yeah, where's Bob, that coming from? Yeah. <laughs> here's <Right>. Bob's advocate, <clears throat> me, going, another day with a broken toilet. Are you kidding me? People. So then they sent in a maintenance guy. What did he do? He took towels Put and towels just wrapped it. towels around the pole. That as, worked. As that they worked do. for a few flushes. So as they do. For a day or so. Yeah, right. Then by the maybe the third or fourth day, the air conditioning isn't working, and it's so hot and humid in Indiana in August. It was like, wow. Nothing you could so do about that. We wow. decided, my sister Susan had a saying for what the nurses were probably thinking every time I showed up or whatever. Oh, boy. There goes Look the, out wife, for the and, wife. Look yes. out for the wife in room 130. Yep. Because <laughs> I was so, I wasn't a troublemaker. Hey, whatever you do, don't run into the wife at 130. No. I wasn't a troublemaker, but I was standing up for Bob. And I right. felt like that was my full time job. Oh, yeah. Well, and, so, well somebody asked to. Yep. A uh, couple things. Yeah. One, I think it's important to point out you've had scans. Tons Since of them. the surgery that, oh, that, that reinforce that the surgery worked 100%. Oh, yes. 100%. Yeah, the I've leak had, is healed. Uh, the leak yeah. is I, well I had healed. a uh, CT scan probably two, well, maybe three weeks ago. With contrast. With a contrast yep. that shows uh, all the cancer mm-hmm. that was in me is not there. His See, whole body. So, so he has no cancer in his whole body. We have done very, very well as far as that. Yeah. And uh, that's a good reminder. Wait, and you appear you. to me physically to be 100%. I, I'm uh, I'm much better than I, I have been in a long time. What would you gauge yourself at? Uh, probably at a ninety percent. Uh, yeah. Okay. Except for my voice, but uh, as far as being able to, uh, I, I I ride a recumbent bike every day. Uh, you know, I I do exercises, lift weights, all this other stuff that you have to do to get your strength back. But the biggest thing for me was. Uh, being able to eat solid food. Oh, when oh, that and that happened, rehab, that glorious rehab. Oh, it was really. They horrible. would come. People would come like AIDS. Knock, knock. Hi, Hi. I'm here to get your menu What's for your tomorrow. What's your menu item for today? What would you yeah. like for your breakfast? If you walk in, your... there's a great big uh, whiteboard. Yeah. Uh, in the room, indicating who the patient is, what uh, nurse is watching you, and then things that you can't let the patient have. And mine was no food. No food. <laughs> no food. <laughs> nothing by mouth. No liquids. Nothing, nothing. by mouth. And, and they'd come in. People come and ask for, uh, you know, what you. What's what would your... you like for your dinner? Oh, Can I bring boy. you an ice cream? Okay. Like, go away. Go away. Well, was, it was, it almost was hurt try Bob's to feelings. Into, but I, even if they'd fed me food, I would not have been able to swallow it. Yep. No, you couldn't swallow it. But so, uh, point being. Yeah. They, you know. It was it was torturous on a couple and of And even when we got released from the uh, therapy, it was called the Acute Rehab Hospital, and he was in all this therapy, and he passed. He was dismissed from speech therapy, uh, physical therapy, and occupational therapy. It was days and days and days of hard work oh, that yeah. he did. We get to go home, and he still only could have ice. Can't eat. No. We came home, and he we still... We came home with uh, so oh, much... Uh, in medical, we ran equipment. a medical equipment. Oh my house gosh! Here. Oh my God! We had oxygen, uh, oxygen, food. Like a giant. It wasn't an oxygen tank. Wit. It's like a machine. It's oh, a big yeah. machine that looks like a humidifier. Yeah. yeah or well. dehumidifier. Yeah, it's exactly what and, it was. Uh, and it sounds like a dehumidifier. But it would be. You know, I, but he had to have it. Had to mask up. We're every sitting night. at your dining room table. Yes, yep. we are. Where all the meds were. This yep. was my nurse's station. It looked like Breaking Bad. It did. When I came into your kitchen. <laughs> it did. Yeah, I'm was so the... proud of my nurse's station, though. <laughs> and you had them all codified. Oh, like, I had every so, tub, every day. Had my a, label exactly maker. What time. You had a whiteboard. Oh, it, oh my It gosh. tripped all of my OCD triggers, man. Yes. I was just loving everything about it. So what was the... I know you started eating, but you had to keep the feeding tube to eat get well, that, enough at, nutrition. At first, I was doing feeding 18 hours a day. Oh, we had a lady then, come. 
Remember that lady came, uh, the spe- uh, oh, yeah. food. Yeah, but the, she was a speech therapist. Uh, but uh, they, when I got home, it was 18 hours a day. Oh, he's on a, uh, like a hanging bag, like you see. So like he would just feed you in It would just feed me constantly. Okay. So I had to mount, so I even bought Bob a reclining chair. And I'm a no recliner person. I bought Bob a reclining Pretty nice. chair. Mm-hmm. This is love. Okay, people, this is love. So he sat for 18 hours. He had to sit in a chair, hooked up to a... Well, not 18. A, I would still. Uh, put in bed. I would have food at night. As, yes. I slept also. He slept overnight with food. At first, you were on uh, 24 hours. Yeah. And then they switched it to 18 hours. So he would go on at 9 p.m. until 6 a.m. Yeah. So what was... 3 the, p.m. I'm sorry. 3 p.m. till 6 What was the first thing you ate? Um, Do you remember? Milkshake. Soft serve. Probably L- yeah. like a ice cream or something. Maybe a jello, I think it was. Yeah, you J- tried jello, jello or applesauce. Apple and, and did you do okay? Well, uh, you know. uh, yeah, I did all right. It was all right. slow go. Oh, don't pretend. But it's, it's, a, it's, it, it, it was, was a lot still, of choking and gagging. Right, <laughs> still right. difficult to, sure. to swallow. I had to teach those muscles in my throat to swallow again. Yeah. I can't even imagine. Yeah. It was difficult. And Very keep difficult. in mind, at that time, we were still monitoring the stupid chest tube. So... Anything he put in, I had to measure this box, this space age looking box. Every day I had to measure it and mark it with a Sharpie with the date so that we knew when it would slow down and he was finally not draining food. And he could not have food, food through his mouth until that stopped draining. So that healed on its own. That was months. Correct. Yes, months. You didn't have six to eight weeks. Okay. That was September is when it finally came out. Then he got to have food. Right. And And then it was a. Small, mm-hmm. very small amount, but I still had feeding tube, so I was getting food from that. Calories. And then and I would have a, a attempt to eat real food. Some solid but food. It was a, a what was called a liquid diet to start, then a Smooth. modified liquid diet, uh, then, like a, a, then a full uh, liquid uh, diet, then, then, then a, a blah, 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 yeah, then a clear liquid diet. <laughs> and there was all these levels, and they'd give us sheets, and this is what you're allowed, and this is what you aren't allowed, do not have. You know, and so we had to just kind of learn what worked for him. So I bought everything, you guys. I've, now I've, remember this: everything <laughs> sounded great. Oh, I'll bet. but everything did not taste no. great. Right. So I bought literally everything that he mm. thought he might want to try, and then I would just giving stuff away. Trial and error. It didn't work. He didn't like just it. Didn't so hate you him. said the other day, I asked you if your taste buds had changed, like they some did. things that you now. Don't like or do like. Correct. So, an example. A uh, sausage, eggs are difficult right now. Really? Meaning just the uh, taste or yes. the thought of them? Mm-hmm. The taste. Okay. I uh, don't know why either because uh, eggs. He liked them when he I love first eggs. could eat. Oh yeah. Well, and also I would when eat you first eggs any time of the day. Yeah. My favorite thing was having breakfast at lunchtime. Oh, there's like nothing to go better. to a restaurant that had oh, breakfast I all day. Breakfast all day long. Right. Always over easy. And now egg. it's uh, it's. Not so you haven't much. had an no. egg for a month or more. It's been a while. It's weird that he just, like he switched from Diet Pepsi to Pepsi. Our doctor said, hey, as many calories, empty calories. Get as many calories, calories as you can. Oh, yeah, you Give the man wants. empty calories. Okay. So I don't have diet drinks anymore. Okay. Everything's sugary. All right. Whole milk. I'm pulling uh, in calories M&Ms. that I wouldn't normally have. Well, yeah. and we may have talked about this. You never used to like water. No, hated it. But now you... Oh, it's the uh, it's life quenching. Yes, that's water. so good. All I day. Do. That's, that's I, nothing amazing. better than an ice cold glass of water. Oh, oh. I, I agree. I I never understood that. I just didn't like it. That's what you didn't said. Didn't care for Which it. I, that's, it's like this is bland and boring. And, and I don't know what. Made why would you I want to drink it? Other and than why uh, on earth would you spend three dollars for a <laughs> bottle of it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe and it's, now he is maybe on it's it. because he was denied it. And That's would have killed for it. it. Don't yeah. know. At the time. Could be. I mean, who knows? I couldn't drink. I couldn't the, have anything. He couldn't the, have the anything. The time that I felt like I knew Bob was well, it's maybe a month ago, <laughs> Bob goes, yeah, we went and had dinner at Fogo de Chow. Yes. <laughs> Good God. That was one of my ch- best days ever. Chunks, yeah. chunks of meat on chunks a stick. Chunks of oh. meat, man. <laughs> Keep I it on. And he was eating. They, now, they, they have a little green oh, card that you flip over. Yeah. The, yeah. Mine was green the whole, night. The the whole time. time I yep. was there. Bringing them meat. Meat, meat, meat. And, and prior uh, to that. Sadly, um, they took out half my stomach. Yeah. So you can't so eat as much. I can't eat as much. Right. Yeah. But it was all He was trying. He was trying. But didn't you say that'll gradually expand? Yes, it will. Yeah. Okay. 
They promise it will. Okay. Don't know if it'll be the exact size. Okay. But it will expand to where yeah. I can have a full meal. Have you noticed you're eating slightly more? Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So on a caregiver note there, when Bob was completely deprived and couldn't have anything besides ice and then some more. I bought a snow cone machine attachment for my KitchenAid mixer so I could make him ice that was soft and mm-hmm. easy. Then we put we flavors, flavors in. in it. I tried you know, every cones. flavor, and then he's like, nope, nope, nope. Don't, don't, didn't, didn't, nope, don't like it. He just wanted ice. So, okay. And I had to get rid of I bought all these juices and stuff. Duh. <laughs> like crazy. We learned, we so, learned a lot. But That's we did funny. learn just step by step. But meanwhile, I'm still a human. I'm in the house with Bob. Right. And I have to eat. And I did not like it at all. I did not want to eat in front of him. I didn't want to sit and enjoy my delicious cup of coffee. He couldn't have coffee or anything in the morning. He had to be hooked up to his dumb feeding tube, you know. So I would go off and hide. And and luckily it was wow. decent yeah. weather, so I could sit on the screen porch mm-hmm. and I would just heat up some horrible frozen. I wasn't going to cook no, and have our house smell delicious. No. Some of the smells were offensive to me. I'll yeah, bet. he didn't like smells. Yeah. And I'm a baker. Well, I wasn't going to bake cookies or breads that he can't eat. So I lost weight. I was not feeling good about myself. And I actually put a few pounds back on after he started eating. Now I've put on a few too many. But at the time... I think you look great, sweetie. Thank you, darling. But at the time, just for other people listening who might be having this same issue, I don't think you have to hide from your person. I don't know that Bob would have asked me to hide, but I no, felt like it wouldn't, no. have, wouldn't have bothered me. And I felt like I should. I knew I couldn't eat. You were being considerate. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, you can eat. It's not going to make me hungry. Nope. No, I, I have it, a tube of food <laughs> whipping right into my intestines. <laughs> a delicious tube. And look what you're missing out on. <laughs> I know. But, I know. Uh, I just had a vision of some listener right now playing along at home with the operation game. Yes. I know. Try, trying what? to <laughs> find the esophagus. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, Remember that was the, how it would shock yes. you? Yes. And that was the one thing uh, after we'd gone through all of this with learning to swallow again, uh, acquiring tastes for food, which uh, it's expanding okay. uh, as we go, uh, was swallowing solids. And it turned out I had a very difficult time swallowing uh, solid food. Oh, yeah. Turned out that my esophagus had closed. Yep. Yep. Then we this. get into the whole. Now we get this into is a, a new brand chapter of new chapter of our recovery, and that is uh, with uh, my throat having to be stretched a number of times. Oh my gosh, you guys! You and know what? I think we should take a pause here because this is kind of a long segment. Maybe feed Vera, come back and do the esophagus. All right. Conk. All right. We'll be right back. All right. So we're back. This is the Bob and Cancer Show. We had to take a little break, take care of some uh, domestic things, <laughs> such as our puppy. Hi, Vera. So uh, we were moving into Chapter 2. Which is living at home, uh, living with our new We're home. Our new life. We're doing the, uh, all the physical therapy that, uh, that we've had in-home nurses come visit, show us what to do. Oh, your PT guy who recorded you. Which, or record- well, I recorded him. He showed oh. me these exercises that I followed religiously. Mm-hmm. And he let him and, record so Bob could put it up on our big TV. And I would follow and along. Was, our grandson helped. He he would sit there and do the rubber band stretches with Grandpa wow. and so cute. Yeah, it was great. And we uh, we learned a lot. And this is when uh, we found out that I was having a problem with my esophagus. Mm-hmm. So now we have to go into this new mode of having my esophagus stretched. And in our previous our previous uh, episode, episode eight, I think it was, yeah. is when we told you all about how he had this pill stuck in his throat, yes. which did some co- kind of damage, and so blah, blah, blah. But So we got this all figured out, yeah. uh, and now it became almost a uh, like bi-weekly yeah. uh, visit to the to the hospital, have my esophagus stretched. They got to know us there. <laughs> and in the and, and during these times, I'm still on a feeding tube. Yeah. Uh, I had uh, the feeding tube. This was really weird. Had the feeding tube stitches come undone, oh, and the feeding God. tube <laughs> slipped completely out. And weird, it's, scary. It's in my hand. <laughs> this you is guys, now, it's horrible. Now this is awful. I, I'm guessing I have to poke it back in that hole. Oh. 
So now I'm poking this thing back in no, the hole. No, 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 no. <laughs> I know, see? Keeping, keeping my fingers crossed that it's going in the right area. We talked to So I got it in there and God, seemed Bob. okay. <laughs> taped it down. We taped it with so much tape. Taped it down. Uh, called the doctor. <laughs> said, well, come on in. Well, let's take a look. And I, well, I'd gotten it back day, in okay. Had, wow. Right. They restitched it. It was great. Uh <laughs> Uh, very me. happy for another week or for two. another week, and then the uh, the little valve that you connect the food to <gasps> exploded. Was, the valve was my <laughs> job, so that's the thing that I insert the. <laughs> so oh, Vera, it's all right. Hold on a second, uh, let me. I have to get our dog uh, and <gasps> let her know that we're doing a podcast. <laughs> yes, <laughs> hold on. All right, so we're back. So uh, the valve. On my feeding tube, uh, in the middle of the night, exploded. So now... So he's hooked up to his bag of food, delicious baby formula. So it's dripping, you know, into it and feeding me. This little machine pumps this stuff into me. The kangaroo pump. It has been... uh, It puncture... uh, It blows up. So what happened is I think he rolled over on it. May have. And it probably kinked the little rubber hose. May have. <laughs> and then the food just went. And then all of a sudden. Built middle, up and built up and built up. Then uh, there's uh, food. Now, this is not backing up from the intestines. This is coming out of the food bag. Food. It's pouring <laughs> into the bed. Imagine, you know, I'm you asleep. let go of a garden hose no, and it's just. No, it's not, is, no, it's not wiggling like it that. Was, it was, it's like a water. Remember wait, the water, water wiggle? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> it was uh, a, a water It was not wiggler. like that. Uh, but it was pumping food Keep in mind, into middle of the night. We're both zombies. Our bed. Out. I'm completely out. Becky's completely out. Oh my God. And all of a sudden, I wake up and I feel this <laughs> no. wetness. And no. Like, what the? And Becky! Oh my God. And now we're up, and now we got to. Now we got to You know, in the, the middle of the night, completely dead to the world. You gotta now change the sheets oh, and the whole thing. That's awful. And remember, oh, he just can't horrible. help me change anything because he's hooked up to a machine and a chest. Well, I chest. was. I was freed all of a sudden. Yes. But uh, I mean, he's like, you got a chest tube. You can't. You have no strength. And I had. I had to, no strength. There's Lord. no way I could ask him to do it. So I think, if I recall, I just threw a bunch of towels down and said, "Lay down on the towels, like you do with Makes the sense. toddler that wets the bed." Makes sense. I wow. did not. I did no. not. He did not no. wet the bed. The bed. Um, so, so that oh. was one of the things that happened during this second chapter, mm-hmm. and oh the whole gosh. esophagus thing. And we're home, getting better every getting day, getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and now we figured out that. If they put a stent in my throat, it'll leave it open for a oh, nice length of time. It's oh, our okay. favorite thing okay. now. And uh, I can eat. I can eat anything. The first time he got the stent in the oh, wherever, my. whenever it was, uh, October, November. I think it was in October, early October. Can't remember. He said, "Honey, it's like the Grand Canyon." I could. I All could eat sudden, anything. He could eat anything. Which he could means, eat meat. Sadly, you were suffering. Yeah, so, he was. something horrible. But he didn't That's know. Awful. No, you don't you know. know. But the other problem is, it's as big as the Grand Canyon, but my stomach is the size <laughs> of a cue ball. <laughs> he had to really learn the capacity of that little stomach. And the funny thing is, our, our actual doctor, who's also right. your doctor, said um, he was reassuring Bob one time on speakerphone that this, this stomach will stretch it'll stretch out he said i know for a fact because i have a lot of cu- uh, not customers patients, patients they're who've, customers who've sure. had the uh, gastric bypass or the yeah. lap band that, you know that the rubber, rubber band, band or uh-huh. staple it and he it said is. oh it stretches and it'll stretch out. it'll stretch i can guarantee yep. it'll wow. stretch and he said so, you know he doesn't want it to stretch for them but uh, right. he wants it for me and he wants it for bob it is stretching He's the one who said... You don't think it's going to be like one of those cartoon tires. It's going to get bu- a bubble on one side, I don't right? Know. I mean, you you hope it stretches... Normal. Normal. We don't know. And remember, <laughs> it's up in his chest. It's not where yours is. Where is it's, it? It's, it's way up, up here. Uh, it's, not it's in the back, but it's... In the back, behind my... It's I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, it's way up in the they back. They pulled his whole stomach way, way, way up. up. So what's there? Is it just uh, the intestines. Empty? Okay, you're just... The intestines are all kind okay. of floating around there. Fighting of, for space. A lot of loose stuff in there. Yeah, this is know. such a horrible. Oh, <laughs> oh it's so, but it gets He's, worse. Oh, uh, this is awful. Oh, yeah. Let's let's keep in mind right now. 
But we're it gets in, worse. You we're get in the, the really lovely does. month of October, which yes. is beautiful weather here. We could. Bob was walking I was pretty outside well. Walking, I'm getting my exercise. He's practicing. I'm regaining the strength that I've lost. We're getting excited for the holidays. I can now eat, and the food I'm taking in is starting to stretch that little cue ball stomach. He's sleeping on wow. his little wedgie thing. And I he's have, got. I'm sleeping, and it's a wedgie. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a one of those wedge pillows. That, oh yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. giant wedge. Yes. Okay, elevate right. you. Keep him from okay. uh, aspirating his okay. little esophagus and stuff. So I'm doing well. I he's am. He's doing great. I am. Just as happy as can be. It's beautiful. Strong. October. Yay. This is great. Here comes. I'm actually looking forward to passing out candy at Halloween. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he's also going to get a new stint on Halloween, on Halloween morning. morning. Halloween morning. So leading up to Halloween, what Bob won't remember is October the 28th, 29th, and 30th, he started going downhill like you couldn't believe, and I thought I was going to lose him. In what way? Bob became, uh, what do you call that? When you're, ooh, like your head is not working right. Um, um, oh, uh, not lucid. The opposite of lucid. What is that called? I forget. My brain. Well, I not think working. we used to refer to it when I was a child <laughs> as retarded. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> so, so Bob started not feeling good. Yes. On. Uh, either Thursday and Friday, one of the kids was over. I think it was Toby, maybe. Somebody was over. Mm -hmm. And and Bob was like, I'm going to bed. I don't feel good, which was weird. Mm -hmm. Then the next day, he had a fever. So I'm checking his temperature. And I looked on the um, charts, you know, and it says, if he has a fever above 101, call. He had had his first immunotherapy appointment oh, the week okay. before, right. which was very exciting. That means whole new chapter. Yep. Immunotherapy is going to increase Bob's own immune system, and off we go. We're going to be cancer-free. Here we go. And uh, he has a fever. Okay. Well, I called the doctor, and they said, just treat it with Tylenol, and the fever will go down. And the fever did go down. Then the fever came back up. Mm -hmm. Called the doctor. Uh, treat it with Tylenol. It'll go down. And it did go down. Next day is Sunday, October the 30th, I think. I don't know when, whenever Halloween was, right. whatever. Fever goes up, and it goes up, and it's a high, like 101.5 or something terrible. So I called the oncologist off and said, I don't know what to do here. Somebody, he was on call, not our main doctor. I, oh, it sounds like Tylenol's doing the job. Okay, well, Tylenol it is. Let's just keep doing Tylenol. Well, on Saturday and Sunday, Bob was incoherent, babbling, saying nonsense. He could not get up out of the bed. He, remember, he has been incredible for about a month or more. Yep. Getting up in the morning, cheerful, happy, here we go, eating, happy. He couldn't eat. He was sick. He had a high fever, and he went to the bathroom. He, he could walk. At this time, he had given up his rollator and everything. Yep, it was all fine. put away in the garage, didn't mm -hmm. need it. And the tension mounts because he is suddenly not able to walk. I'm like, what is wrong? I think Bob's had a stroke. I remember you telling me that. Like, something is terribly wrong. Mm -hmm. So I called Frank, mm -hmm. my brother-in-law next door, who is a hero. Um, Bob has slipped on the bathroom floor. He didn't fall. He didn't fall hard. He just slipped, and I couldn't get him up. And... Uh, so Frank came over, helped me, got him up, and he said, you know, we got Bob back to bed. And then he said to me, you know, it's, it's like Bob's super drunk. Mm -hmm. Like, only, I've only ever seen him that way once or twice in our whole lives. Like, really drunk, where you can't walk and you're babbling, and uh, you've seen that in your own self, whatever, <laughs> theoretically. There's videos, Allegedly. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... so, so he's sort of drunk. Well, Frank said, Bob, can you roll your tongue? So he stuck his tongue out and did his little thing. And he's like, well, it doesn't seem like he had a stroke. He seems okay. Um, let's just let him sleep it off. Next day, four in the morning. This is on Halloween morning. Bob says, honey, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm like, okay, let's go. So I came around his side of the bed to help him because he could no longer get up and walk on his own. Had the little rollator deal. Got it ready. He starts walking and his legs are like rubber. Not like Bob. This is not how Bob has been. He's basically unable to walk. Good Lord. I'm standing behind him, hopefully holding him up enough to get to the bathroom. And then he just goes down. And he falls. He didn't fall hard. He just slipped to the floor. 
which then made me slip to the floor. And now we've both scraped ourselves on the wall and the woodwork and we're bleeding everywhere because we're old and have thin skin. <laughs> That's true. There was blood everywhere. Yeah, was, it was like way. I, mean, I, scra- I think I scraped the knee. She scraped an elbow. And he's. But I cannot I'm move down. him. He's down. And he said, "I have to go to the bathroom." And I said, "Well, I can't help you." And I, I started said, well, throwing towels at him. I'm like, "You just yep, pee yep. on these towels." I'll just pretend I'm a. It was a nightmare. Yeah. It was because adults. Do you remember this? I no. remember the being on the ground, and then I remember waking up in the hospital. Good mm-hmm. lord. So it's four in the morning. And I'm like, I can't call Frank to help me. It's four in the morning. That's not fair to Frank. I'm going to call 911. I said, Bob, I'm going to call 911. I've never done it on like this, but I just feel like I should. I'm going to call 911. He's like, no, I can crawl back to bed. So he starts trying to crawl back to bed. I couldn't. Nope. And I said, I'm not letting you crawl back and get back in bed because something is wrong. This is not just you not feeling good. It's not the flu. Something's really wrong. I call 911. They get to our house. And, uh, it looks like a crime scene. It, there's well, blood. Yeah. And, I mean, right. it's like they don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong. They're looking at Bob. They're loading him up. They couldn't get in our gate. I'm like, crash the gate. I don't care if you can get through the railroad gate. Find a way in here. They got in, took Bob to the hospital. I hurried up, went to the ER. And we're in the ER basically now about 5 in the morning. And they're doing all the vitals and all the stuff. And Bob is just babbling and blah, blah, blah. As I'm known to do. <laughs> he's known to do. And I, I'm like, you guys, I don't know what's wrong. Something's wrong. He's got a fever. You figure it out. Please help me. And they did an MRI. And in comes our oncologist um, uh, physician assistant, who we love. He would love him. He's wonderful. You know who you are. <laughs> and he said... Well, it appears uh, there's a spot on Bob's brain. Yep. And his face was just pale, and his eyes were glazed, and I was freaking out. And I said, absolutely no. No way. No. It's too soon. Bob cannot, it, it cannot have spread. He just had a scan last week. There's no cancer in his brain. No. I won't accept this. And he said, well, there's, there's a small chance or an outside chance that it's an infection. I'm like, well, then that's what it is. That's is an infection. Let's determine this now. So in comes infectious disease. In comes all these different doctors. They took him for a spinal tap, which is not called a spinal tap now. Oh, it's a lumbar... Lumbar puncture. Uh, lumbar puncture. I think because of the movie. The band sued. <laughs> they had to. I yes. mean, isn't that funny that the, no one called it that? A no, They called puncture. it an LP. Yeah. He's going to have an LP. And I said, what's an LP? And they're like, a uh, lumbar puncture. I said, well, what is that? You'll know oh, it yeah, as a spinal like, tap. Like a spinal tap? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, okay. Of course, I wanted to give some Christopher Guest lines and yes. stuff. No, it wasn't funny at that no, moment. No. There was nothing funny about this particular hospital trip. So I called my sister and said, please come be with me because I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> then we find out in the ER that Bob has meningitis. And this leads to a nine-day hospital stay. Back in the hospital. Yep. Back in the intensive care. Don't uh, don't go to the hospital. No. Nope. On uh, Halloween. <laughs> Why, I Bob? Only I uh, woke up in the hospital. The face right in front of me, <laughs> big face with cotton eyebrows. And a silly hat. And a silly hat staring at me, telling me I'm okay. And I'm freaking out. Well, yeah, that's not because is- his brain's not working anyway. And that's not the light at the end of the tunnel. No, I was like, no, uh-uh. no, I don't want to no. go in that you room. Don't, want, don't be the dwarf, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, apparently, you know, at hospitals, nurses dress up for Halloween. I guess. And yeah. The next one, I've got a dwarf <laughs> in my face. She was awesome, and, however. Yes, very, this is, this is she a was freak very, show. I know. She was a great one nurse. One thing after another. Good Lord. She yeah. was great. Uh, nine days went. Uh, it took forever. It was terrible. It. And the whole Just time, horrible. I thought Bob was completely, after the first couple of days, he's on super antibiotics, mm-hmm. like big uh, pills, giant uh, drip, 24-7 of antibiotics, a heavy, broad spectrum, whatever. And I thought Bob was lucid because he was talking to me just like you I don't talking to me thing. now. Really? No. 
Oh, conversations that we had that I mentioned later. Like even just a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned something we had talked about. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. It, his brain was Meningitis. No, it's because right. she wanted a new car. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. No, his brain, because... I our, don't remember anything. The brain is built with protections to keep it from getting infected. Our brains don't get infection. But his did. It's not related to cancer. No one can tell us how or why he got meningitis or how we can prevent him from getting meningitis. So it can recur? That's well, what I, I want to know. It's not like a one and done no, thing, I, like uh, measles. I'm or, guessing no, it it's is. not like that. Okay. No, no, no. It doesn't prevent you from getting it. We just don't know how he got it. How I got it. But the theory. But we got rid of it. Okay. The working theory is that it came from that leak because that was an infected area of his body, okay. if you'll recall that little right. leak, and something seeded off of that. But well, then when you came home, he had to stay on antibiotics, right? For yes, a long time. My nursing skills expanded to yeah. now When IV. I was there, they uh, said we're going to put a pick line in. And I said, okay. And what I do remember is these two guys. <laughs> remember those guys? Who I thought were from the movie Men in Black. <laughs> it was so weird. It was so crazy. very scientific, weird. And bedside. They, they were, did it bedside. They were doing it right there in the bed. Did the whole thing. I had to leave ran, the room. Ran the... Uh, Pick line all the way to my heart. They're fully uh, bo- body and they're, yeah, protection. Yeah, they're all protected up. And that was just really weird. Then all of a sudden, I've got a pick line, and they're wheeling their screen out. And they then, did it with the ultrasound, and it has yeah, to be a they, sterile environment. Yeah. So everyone had to leave and shut the door oh, and seal God. it off and all that. So that pick line, uh, it was... Eight weeks of... Uh, antibiotics through that, administered by my wife... Like a for, syringe? Yep. Is that how you do that? Yep. For uh, about five to six weeks after. I had home nurse we got home. come and show me how to do it, but that just added to my nurse's station. I was still feeding him in a tube. We were so grateful that he still had the tube because we'd been pleading with them to take that damn tube out. We were sick of the feeding tube, but now here's a feeding served tube. served another purpose. Yes, oh, it, did. it sure did. Yep. Really Because he was supposed to get his stent put in that day. In fact, when we got to the ER, I'm like, well, Bob has an appointment upstairs at 830. Can we just go up there? Well, he's in the same building. It's just over there. Can we? They're no. like, uh, no. no. We, we, we kind of got to no. deal with Your this meningitis. Your husband's a lunatic right now. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> evidently, and I didn't know this, men- meningitis is a very, very bad deal. It's deadly. It can kill you in 30 minutes. I did not know that. So had I let Bob go back to bed, which is what he wanted, and which he you know, might have might not be here right know. now. We don't but know what here. would have happened. Do they call it spinal meningitis? Yeah. I mean, th- that's yeah. a weird a word that and I So there's heard. two kinds I did learn. Okay. There's either viral mm-hmm. or bacterial. And our doctor, our personal doctor that you know, had said to me on the phone, he said we're going to wait till they're going to wait till they get results. Let's hope that it's viral. Because viral is going to just it will just work Run itself its out. Okay. Okay. Because he said Bacterial, that's a bad deal. Man. And it was bacterial. Man. Like, oh, thanks for telling me that. So, so we, we just... Had, so know, we endured... We came uh, back home. Yet, yet again. Six weeks of Good antibiotics he had with my shots home nurse. Home nurse. And uh, we did it. We slowly came out of it. But he was weak again. It set him back. I had to start all over yep. again with the workout. and Man. Because you know what? Laying in a hospital bed for 10 days like he did this second time. It knocks you out. It's a lot. It takes all the muscle mass that he had just been building up with his bicycle and his walking and his weights and all that went away because he was just flat on his back again. So at the end of the antibiotics, the doctor wants a scan Mm -hmm. (laughs) and uh, they make an appointment for me. I said, okay, we're going to do this for you. It'll be at 8 o'clock at night at uh, one of our affiliate hospitals. In the hood. And... uh, (laughs) So, and boy, was it. So we uh, we make the appointment. We get through all of the antibiotics. Now we have to go to make sure it's all been contained. Mm-hmm. I have to get an MRI at this hospital. Uh, I'm, it's the I only hate, one they could get okay. this day. I hate the thought of an MRI. I don't like the tube, the, the whole confinement. Yep. Yes. So I'm, I'm a little nervous to begin with because of this. Then we get to the hospital. They said to make go through the ER entrance. That's right where the uh, MRI machine is. Because it was at night. Okay. So we go in there, and the first thing we have to do is go through metal detectors and get patted down. And they went through my purse. In order to uh, 
get into the hospital. Wow. That's a different I was hospital, a, I was like, well, I'm a little surprised by that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and now Cops I'm going to sit everywhere. there. Oh, Cops sit everywhere. Sit there and wait and wait, get the MRI, get the hell out of there. Made it home. And Next day? I was day? like, oh, man. Went to the doctor. Doctor said it's it's all under control. Good. You're going to pull the pick shape. line. Pull the pick line. So we're going to pull the pick line. And shortly after that, they pulled the food line. It's gone. He I got has the, no tubes. I got that. Uh, I got that stent in in uh, in November, and I've had uh, great swallowing ever since. Man, he has no tubes. He nothing. Has I'm nothing. A, He's just a guy now with yeah. some scars. I looked well like a learned. marionette puppet there for a while. I had well, yeah, I mean, so many Lord. things Tubes tied to my body. And, yeah, pick line. That was like, are you kidding me? Can this guy please have a break? Come on. And you know what? I'm so grateful for the ambulance drivers, for those people in the ER that figured it out because evidently time was of the essence and I didn't know it. And Good he Lord. lived through something that many people don't live through yeah. yet again. And I'm just so grateful. And so he gets a setback and still hangs in there. He has to put up with all those stupid shots. We had to keep it in the fridge. I had to take it out an hour before because so, I didn't want I had to get up right. early in the morning, take his medicine out. So it would be room temp because you can't shoot that. Cold, cold stuff, stuff into it goes your heart. Right goes, into the heart. That's not good. No, just things we had to learn along the way. But now, he's, now back to uh, he's uh, well, great. in my opinion, ninety percent. Yep. I am. Uh, I'm just happy as can be. We're getting ready to do a cross country trip. Yes. What a victory! Uh, it is such a victory. A, I mean, yeah. this is like the worst movie. I know. You could yeah, ever I, watch. I, I know. It's yeah, almost I like... I would have turned it off long ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's just, not no, real. No, that's not real. Oh, meningitis bullshit. But I mean, <laughs> yep. you've had spewing tubes, exploding <laughs> toilets. Oh, he's I had... I mean, a, you've had every... We left some things out. Uh, well, I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thankfully. Speaking of, yeah, man. Yeah. But, I'll, give, uh, I'll give you a one-word hint. Enema. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. And well, uh, and a lot and of, on that note, a lot of <laughs> gagging and coughing. And oh, there was it was just horrible. learning to adjust to that poor stuff. A lot of stuff that uh, that happens that you're just not. No, no one can tell you this yeah. is what's going to happen. So we're no sitting one. here, and I would tell people that know Bob or know what Bob looks like. He looks like Bob to yes. me. He sounds ninety five percent like Bob. Yes, I'm almost there. The voice yeah. still is not a hundred percent. It, it will be there. Oh, it's a lot stronger than it was. Yeah, yeah. and he's. Color is great. I'm going to have Bob, as soon as we finish. But this diet I'm on, I would not recommend. No, what you're on now? <laughs> what do you mean? I mean the, the seven oh, months. Oh, how you lost weight. The seven months no, of no, cancer no, diet. That's not how to drop 15 that's pounds. That's the wrong way no, to do it. No, we don't yeah. like that. Uh, yeah. But you know what? The fact that Bob put on fi- uh, 14 pounds prior, prior to yeah. surgery, that gave him 14 pounds to give. Yeah. Yep. Otherwise, he would be 130 pounds right gone. now. Yeah, He's so, so small. Yep. Because you all saw Toby Keith. Everyone saw him yep. uh, in that last. Toby appearance. was. Uh, I so met thin. Toby a couple of times, and a robust man. Yep. Big. Strong. He was just as uh, uh, just a wonderful presence, great yep. person, uh, and he he shriveled down to a very weak man. Yeah. And, and Bob sad. never and did. It, it took nope. him. I've, nope. I've been fortunate. I shriveled down. You did, but not. Uh, no, but you, you got it back. Yep. I, I, and I'm, it's coming back now. I, yeah. And we made all of Bob's goals through this process. Yep. Every one that we had set, we reached. We had some setbacks: two steps forward, one step back. But now we have a new. We goal. had a few where it was one step forward, two steps back. No, I know. Back. Yes, I know. It was. Uh, but, but in terms of our latest goal, what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to Arizona. How are yeah. we doing it? Uh, pull on our trailer. Yep. yep. Yeah. We're going camping. That's great. We're and camping. we're going to camp across the United States. I don't know if this is confidential, but uh, since the halftime show, Bob has now taken up roller skating. Yes. <laughs> and that's and his I want, new exercise. Yes. <laughs> I, I actually, my dream is to be an usher of person. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, we are just so pleased. Oh, it's amazing. With, with where he is It's now. been a journey, okay, I have now. to admit. It really has. It's an eye opener. It. Yeah. Uh, we have high hopes for this immunotherapy. Yeah, we everything. We have high is... hopes for his esophagus finally freaking staying open. Well, and, and when it's I getting heard there. Fogo de Chao, that was a Big green one. light. But yeah. then the other thing is, two weeks ago, for the first time since July 14th, 
Bob had a whiskey. Yes, I he did. did. Yes. We yes. sat and we had a that pizza. Was so great. And normally we drink Gatorade here at yep. Bob's house. And he goes, you know what? I think I'm going to pour us a whiskey. We Ready went for down a to the bar. Yeah, yeah, we did. It was very, and I thought, okay. He's back. He, yeah. The boy is back. And, and that's what I was waiting for. And that tasted yeah. like whiskey. Too. Yeah. It, 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 it was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. It was wonderful. <laughs> that's yeah. great, Bob. Yes. That's fantastic. Well. So when we're done, I'm going to have Bob take a picture of us. Okay. Like you said, he looks like Bob. Oh, yeah, totally. I want to have our uh, a photo of us recording this podcast so we can put it on the website and um, people can see mm-hmm. how great Bob looks. It's I mean, great. he just looks great. To victory. I'm proud well, of you. I'm, proud. I'm, uh, I'm proud of myself. You should be. I uh, thank you two for re- taking this journey with me, yeah. especially you, sweetheart. Oh, my gosh. Well, Bob gave me a bracelet. She saved my life. That's uh, a, you saved Gorgeous. my life bracelet. So I'm oh, wearing that that's as a sweet. reminder that's... of thank you for saving my By life. By the way, they don't sell those. Uh, you can't go in and ask for the Save My Life bracelet. No. I don't think it, no. I don't think I, it actually I really noticed exists. I notice your bracelet has your phone number and address yes. on its and box. It, yes. <laughs> and, if lost, please. And the turn. hospital's logo. Yeah. Uh, oh, he had enough hospital oh, bracelets, man. man. Hopefully man. never again. Never again. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm really So it's really been a, it's been a wild ride. I'm glad we could share this. Yes. I hope. And thank uh, you to all of you guys out there. I Oof. hope it opened some eyes. Well, uh, yeah. Hopefully it gave you some good information. Hopefully we gave you some laughs. Yeah. And, and the message you have for anyone who's facing something similar. Go through it. Yep. Go, yeah. go ahead in. But, and, Trust your doctor. And, Don't give up. No. Don't no. give up. And uh, honest to God, attitude is. Yep. Is and very, early detection, let's not forget. Very important. Oh, yes. Totally. Please well, that, go get your. That's a, that, and that is yeah, it's true. But then there are those who just don't have the means to get the early detection. Or the actual, they just, it's too late when it's they. It's too late. So just go it's in there. Just and go do in there. What, trust him. Yep. And uh, and fight your best fight. Fight your best fight. So, great way to end. Yep. Indeed. Here's to the next chapter. Here's to right. killing my partner. Yes. You killed him. <laughs> dead. You did it, dead? Bob. Dead. You did it. Poor Judd is Look dead. at that. I wish you could see Poor the tears Judd in Bob's Fred. eyes. It's beautiful. What a beautiful trip. I'm so proud. Love of you all. Me too. Yep. Love you too. Thanks. Bob. Yep. This is the Bob and Cancer Show. Oh, this was the Bob and Cancer Show. It's over. (laughs) You've been listening to the season finale of the Bob and Cancer Show. Bob Cavoyan appears courtesy of No Mess Feeding Tubes. No Mess. We fill your stomach, not your bed. This is Whit Grayson speaking.